Hello, welcome back. Last time I made a pretty cool program that solved a puzzle that was not actually the puzzle that the spec told me to solve. So, uh, right, this was a failed something. Um, yeah, so this is cool. It passes the first test case, but in the second one it fails because I pass over a harvest location that has a thing waiting for me and I have to do it immediately instead of continuing to my destination. So yeah, after I discovered that, I spent a whole bunch of time trying to figure out something to do about that and got basically nowhere and decided to set it down instead. So, um... I've thought about this over the last couple of days. There was actually one more thing in the spec that I didn't, uh, didn't really observe. Where is that thing? The harvester will never receive a command to harvest its starting location. So if I look at this, this, the zero, 00 square, is a lighter gray. Nothing can grow there because that's where this thing parks. Okay, so, um, things I need to do. So basically, I need a radically different design than this because I can't fit anything else much in this space from this template. So I'm going to start all over. New, whoops, that's a copy. Uh, need to be careful pressing those buttons. I don't want to accidentally delete something that, that I don't want to delete. But anyway, I'm going to start here, and uh, so thinking about it, first of all, this radio, this can go wherever the heck on the board I want it. It does have to be on the board, but you know, I could stick it over here if that's handier, I could turn it around. I think having gone left to right before kind of locked me into a certain layout that was hard to break once I was there. Now, so again, I've spent some time thinking, this music is like surprisingly loud sometimes. I spent some time thinking about what it would take to architect this in such a way that I could harvest uh, harvest as I roll over something. So what I came up with was that I want to start an architecture that uses, you know, this for the data store, sure. But like over on this left side, I want to completely occupy this with an API for this. So basically an API for the storage that does four things. I wrote them down, what are they? So I can add a new location to be harvested. So that'll be what, um, what this initial microcontroller does, right? Where's the input, right? Yeah, you, you're the one who talks to the radio. Okay, so that looks nice and small. Let's see, I have to control shift C to copy and be able to take to another puzzle. I'll go ahead and stick this on the board right here, and sure, let's just pretend. Uh, you will be modified, but not as heavily as everything else that I needed to do. So idea is, I have this API, uh, storage API here that is the only thing that talks to this. One thing that does is it frees up a lot of pins, because I don't have to talk to both uh, address and data, I don't have to talk to both sides of this. I can just have one, uh, one Xbus line from everybody who needs to talk to storage ever coming into this one place. All right, so operations this will do. Add new coordinate. Okay, add new coord. Uh, get first, get oldest coord. find match. So somebody's going to run this every tick and see if uh, the current motor locations match anything in this table. And the hard one, delete index. So from something in the middle of the storage, I want to be able to delete a value and then shuffle everything up from there. Yes, that Wait, ooh. No, that's absolutely fine, yes. This will be used both when I harvest my current destination and anything along the way. What that's going to end up doing is when I get to the oldest location and harvest there, everything will bubble up and that's how my, uh, so I, I will no longer have like one address pointer for uh, Q head and one for Q tail. Uh, instead the the head will always be at wherever is latest and non-zero, and the tail will always be at the very beginning. Yes. Uh, well, whichever way you want to think of head and tail. I think of head as the one where things are added, and tail where things are, you know, the, the oldest stuff. 
So, uh, deleting an item from potentially the middle of an array, from anything other than the end of an array, is a known algorithm. I do it all the time when I'm writing C code, uh, so I'm extremely familiar with that. It's just that doing it in this language is a little non-trivial. I have some ideas that might involve, like, having two address pointers chase each other, having this thing, like, write to its own data line, kind of, um... I'm definitely going to need more space than just one of... I'm just going to set down two of these. It's annoying this board isn't like one cell taller, but I mean, there isn't room for that. Uh, so probably... Will, oh yeah, so another reason I definitely will need two controllers other than just line count is also pin count, because... I will need to access all four of these, I'm pretty sure. And I also need an extra line to actually talk to the outside world. Now, figuring out how to route this. Maybe I can get away with uh, one of these and one of these, or something. But yeah, so outside of the world controller, somebody to talk to. Uh, this could look something like that. This could, well, not if I want... Wait, hang on, this is, this is D1, this is A1. Yeah, okay, so I've already made that impossible, but I could probably make it work with some of this. Although, right, these need to talk to each other, so that's where... Okay. So wire routing already is not great here. Yup, already is not great. Well, I can do that, sure, but I can't put a second bridge in there for that. It frees up a tiny bit of space there, which I can't really use productively. Okay, yeah, so this is still kind of a super nightmare. From what I hear, it sounds like this puzzle has a bit of a reputation. So yeah, just a, a wire routing exercise, first off, is is useful to, uh, to think about here. What if... What if this one communicated on the right, and that one communicated on the left? That way I expanded to this space, which might be okay, we'll see. Um, and then if on the left... I'm not using simple pins for this for anything, so that's totally fine. Okay, yeah, there we go. That route's much nicer, except I don't have a way to get at this. Uh, so... So what's that gonna mean? Oh, maybe... Let's see, is there any way... Not quite. That gives me part connected to self. This can't quite do that. Uh, could I... I don't know if I moved it right one more, maybe. So, a lot of the cutout footage was this. <laughs> like, just like what's happening here, uh, you didn't miss much, honestly. Right, um, so the, the problem here is that these, these two need to communicate with each other. Uh, and I also want to fill every pin on the... This, I think part of my plan, it, it made more sense to have two of these pointing to the same data pin, right? So that doesn't get the address pin. That's helping nothing. Okay, so now a zero can't be accessed. Okay, so if D0 is going to your X1... Wait, hang on, I have three uh, connections to this. That's not really what I was going for. Okay, so if that's A... if that's D0... no, if that's A0... Or rather... well, now this is going nowhere. Well, this can go here. Wait, but... okay, so you have that side? Then what's... 
Wait, what? What's going on here? So here's the connection between these two. Yeah, you only need... Th well, you might need four, but right now I'm, I'm only thinking of three. Um, right, but the problem here is then... Routing this to the, no, I want no, I want this to a zero. Okay, yeah, so I can do that, and that's this is what talks to the outside world. Okay, so it could look like that, and this would compact a little better if I did that. Okay, and then this would be unoccupied, or maybe I could bridge it to something else. Okay, so that's a plausible means of wiring this whole side of the board. Now, while I went through that exercise, yes, I don't know if that's the layout that I want. I just, okay, so you know what? Fine, I'm gonna make another copy here. I should start naming these. <laughs> uh, um, how do I rename? So this is why early out new. I'm just going to make a copy of this. Working solution. Okay. So I have the wire layout if I want to come back to that. Now I'm going to maybe forget about this and just think about what the code is. Okay. So let me put this on a note just so it's not in the way of actually writing code. Add new coordinates. Get oldest coordinate. Find match. Delete index. I can stick this here. There we go. I'm going to stick it here. Uh, so now, well, so I connected something. What did I connect? This is my communication line between this helper controller and this main one. So this is my communication to the outside world. Uh, so you have X1 for D0, X2 for A0. Sure. I don't think it's right to do that, though. Somebody's going to need both sides of the data. Not necessarily of the address, though. I can do that. In theory, yeah, I can... I can almost do that. Because if I do this, if I could put a bridge here, I could do that. Uh, if I reroute this to here, there we go. Okay, that's plausible. So you have access to D0 and to A0. You have access to D1, A1, and D0. Okay, that's pretty plausible. Now that I've done this... Uh, I, I made this copy too early. Why are layout new? Working solution, okay. <laughs> By working, I don't mean it works and successfully completes. I mean, it's the one that I am currently working on. Okay, so now for this API, um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I determined that these are all the operations that would need to be done here. So my current question is, can I implement all of these operations in this much instruction space with this wiring? And how will I do that part of it? Okay, so add new coordinate. That one's easy. In fact, fact, if I park my data pointer in a certain place, you don't even need to be involved. I can just write it to this line directly. Okay, so somebody may be able to write directly to D1 or D0 if I can get it out of there, which I cannot. Okay, so somebody might write directly to D1. I'll, I'll think about that. Uh, what are the interesting ones? Get oldest coordinates. That one's easy. Okay, so, but, uh, so probably want to do a TCP, uh, so, X, X3. So let's say negative one. Oldest chord, negative one. Find match, zero. Delete index, one. So TCP X3, zero. Uh, minus means oldest chord. Move zero, X2, move X1, X3. Move X1, X3. Move X1, X3. 
And uh, this will definitely re be receiving multiple requests per uh, per cycle, and that's fine. This isn't going to be power efficient, but this design here is not power efficient. Like having to harvest any location that I'm over, just skim, skim through the entire thing. My, my old one was power efficient, and this is great. Worked fantastically, but hold on. So, um, so back here, good solution for wrong spec. I have the two motor controllers. I probably want to bring those over more or less as is. This is just an IO expander, and this was storage and harvest logic. Man, look how compact this is. This is so tiny. I love it. Uh, would be great. Okay, so... Oops. Uh, control shift V? No, I did, didn't I control shift C? I thought I did. Control shift C. I get this weird thing in my pasteboard if I don't hold shift. And it happened again. I've done this before. Why, why, do, you, why do you act this way? Control Alt C. Control Alt V. Okay, that time it worked. Maybe it's Alt. Maybe it's just because I I don't know. I don't know. Just don't know. Okay, so yeah, motor controllers. Right, I'm gonna have to talk to the radio at some point. Um, yeah, I just wanted to see what the layout looks like with this. So two of those, I'm probably, okay, so harvest will have to come out of here somehow, whatever. Yeah, I like the way these motor controllers were. That reclaims a bit of space, which I cannot sneak out of here because that all goes through X-Pins. Man, what an annoying spot. Like, look at, look at this. It's just, just set up in such an obnoxious way. Okay, so let's do another wire routing exercise. If this is down here, then you can go to that, and you can't go anywhere at all. And you can't go anywhere at all. So motor wire gets trapped there, and this cuts off that wire. And I can't, there's just no, no getting around it. I have to do that. Uh, I don't know if I want these to work the way that they worked there. I might, I might not. Let's see, why was this going to be better? There was something that was going to make sense with what I was doing there, but right now it doesn't look like it's going to... How did I have that routed here? Okay, so this was high and then Harvest snuck around uh, low. I want to be able to read it. Okay, so that sneaks around there. You connect to that. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. All right, and I have all this space for doing... Okay, so I could probably... Well, it depends what you have to connect to. Okay, but yeah, I do kind of like the way this looks. Yeah, this would have to route through somewhere. Okay, so this would be different. I don't know. Something like that. Uh, somebody will have to connect to that, but that's easy. Okay, so anyway... Uh, So this is, so negative one is my oldest chord. I can skip two jump weights, right, so I know this trick. I can skip both of those by putting the plus case here and then putting a tech x3 zero. Uh, no, that consumes it, so no I can't. So I need both jump weights. Unless I repeat zeros, or repeat whatever message, but no, that's a lot of instructions for other thingies. Delete and X, that's the big one. So... How will things be organized here? So, basically, so, right. Oldest thing goes here. Newer... Bubbles down there. Uh, delete index. Okay, so if I get a plus, I want to move x3 so the second parameter there is going to be sent to x0 
And then in here, if you get a zero, find match. Okay. Um, be fine to do this unconditionally, I think. Just initialize the the address pointer to zero, whichever operation I'm gonna do. Uh, okay, so if we're trying to do find match, I might be able to fit that into these instructions. So that would just mean... So let's try a counted for loop. Move. 14 ack. I could also maybe use the address. Um, oh, actually, or I could use the fact that this is zero terminated. Another thought I had, since there will never be more than six, oh wait, no. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, six harvest locations takes up that much. I had a thought to use marker values for like, so make this a three, uh, three value tuple thing, um, where a zero would mean, I don't know. No, that's, it's, it's not going to work. It doesn't fit. Don't, don't think about it anymore. <laughs> I, I had thoughts of fitting a third value in there, but I don't want to. So anyway, um, right. So I'm counting to 14. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm counting to seven. Okay, so tech X1, the D0 line. Uh, uh, okay, so what am I comparing it to? This is where a simple pin might be able to come in. So I would send one value to be put into... Put that in dat, and when you ask... To find a match, you also set this simple pin to something. So tech x1 dat uh, minus move x1 null, because I want to be sure that stays combined, plus tech x1 p1. I'm out of space. Okay. I'm very much out of space already. There may be some potential for expanding this further, depending on what I need in the rest of the puzzle. This is this still just bothers me that I can't get that extra column. Like, why? Why? This little cutout is just so mean about it. Completely unnecessary. Um, okay, well that didn't fit. Um, if I could use both simple pins, then I wouldn't have to do any of the dat stuff. Okay, so let's pretend I could do that. Tech x1 dat, let's just say it's p0. I don't want to actually write that because it would complain at me. Minus one p1 plus move one. No, okay, so to do that, it'd be like Move one, x3, jump, wait. Uh, otherwise, tech ack, zero, sub one, uh, minus jump loop. And then if I get to the end of that without finding a match, I move zero to x3. Okay, but that's a lot more lines than I have here. So find match might need to be something different. Okay, so there was this whole idea of connecting to this again from another spot. Uh, what if I could have a match finder here? Okay, so like one controller per operation or something like that. I don't really need one for add cord if the address pointers are kept in a careful place. So let's say I wanted to delete. So my idea for deleting from the middle of an array, I would send this command if I if I had reached my oldest location, everything would bubble up. Uh, so I think six zero. If 
if I know what both of the address pointers are... Okay, so... Um, if when I get here... Both... I'm going to just write in one of these. Uh... What do I tell this? I tell it an index. So wait, I want to move... Okay, so hang on. Which address pointer do I have access to? A1. Oh boy. Uh... So now, hold on. Let's think of this a different way. Let's say that when this gets a message... A0 has been set to the location that I'm removing. And so has A1. Let's just pretend those both have happened. What I could then do... Well, heck, if it's just... Um, let's, let's go even further than that. Let's say A1 has... Let's say A0 has been set to past the index that I'm deleting. So what I would do is... So since I have both ends of this data line, I would move X3 to X0. So I read from later in the data store and right to earlier. Then I do that for as many times as it takes to get to the end. How do I know when I get to the end? Well... Okay, so I can access one of the address pointers and it's going to be the later one. Tech X2 the address zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven Shh. Yeah, out of my way okay so this is 13 this is 12 okay when the pointer arrives here that means okay so there will always be two zeros here and here once I've gotten there I have definitely overwritten all the earlier data because there will never be more than six things in the queue Hey, so with those preconditions, delete index can actually be three lines? What? Wow, okay, I thought this was going to take, like, one of these and then some more space, but no, it can be three lines. Neat. With the appropriate preconditions, I can actually do that. Okay. Neat. And this is indeed using all three of its connections. The, the D1, the A1, and the D0. Okay, cool. So now, does any... No one else has access to A1. That's fine. So I can move X0 to X2. So this will set the address initially, because you're the only one who has access to that. Okay, and you have a little bit of extra room, even. So delete index is 1. Move x3, x0. So this will send the parameter of what index to delete. So here's the thing. How do I know what index that is? Okay, so, so what's missing? Add coordinate. I'm going to want access to... I want to, like, flip some of this stuff horizontally, I think. That's not convenient. Eh, I can do that without too much inconvenience, I think. Sort of. Um, well, 
what's missing. Uh, so how will I manage my address pointers and stuff? So this is moving both of them. This is going to leave my... Actually, this is going to leave my A0 at the end, at the perfect place to add a new entry. So that's where A0 will be. A1 will be too past that in a useless place. I could... Reset it to the beginning of the thing. That's reasonable. Okay. So that might work. All right. Um, so I think I think this is basically the hardest. Like de deleting is the hardest operation for sure. Now I just have to fit everything else in here and set up the preconditions that allows this to be this easy. So find match. I didn't write that. So oldest cohort, move x1. X2. Okay, so when does that have to happen? Okay, so let's go back to good working for solution for wrong spec. So what does this actually do? I'm, I might be at the point where I want to write the rest of the program and see how far I get with that. Okay, yeah, so let's start hooking this up and see how close I get. What I want to do... Sure, yeah, so wait on the radio. Uh... When I get a coordinate, I move the two of them to the head of the queue, the, the latest. Yeah, as long as... Okay, now, no one has to actually listen to the radio. No one has to ever listen to the radio. Uh, sorry, well, one has to... <laughs> wow, I said completely the wrong words here. One has to listen to the radio and uh, pass its message along. No one has to know when that has happened. They might want to wait until... What's this X2 in the good working solution? What, what's your X2 connected to? The address line. That goes to X3. What is that? What do you do with that? Take that X1. Okay. So, right, that determines whether the head and tail of the queue are in different places. Because, yeah, in the first tick, nothing's ripe, so it needs to do nothing. Okay, sure, so that's a case that I will need to handle. Someone out here. Okay, so I need... Um, you're, you're nothing. You don't exist. Uh, okay, so motor controllers. Are these good as they are? 50p1. SLXX0. Let's move 50p1. Right, this was a weird instruction that just made sense there because it's, it's actually for this conditional. Uh, I can change this to X1 if that lays out better. Same for you. Uh, what you receive is l destination location. TCP dot ACK, and ACK is where your current location is. This does the motor control, sub one if you move that way, add one if you move that way. And then you report something. I don't think I need to report anything except my current location. All right, so every tick you're going to report your current location to whoever's listening. Ah, but if you're doing this SLX, that's fine. 
Uh, right now it just reports whether it's at its destination or not. That's not what I need. I do definitely need your current location. Uh, I do actually need this stuff. Why did I put it in that order? I need to sleep first? Yeah, I guess so. All right, that's fine. Uh, all right, so speculatively, that's what I would actually want. So every tick that you receive a message for a destination. You report where you currently are. So somebody who's harvesting is going to listen to that report. Okay, so you're the harvester. Hope you don't have to talk to more than uh, two people. I guess, well, I can change things around if, if you do end up having to. That X0 is now looking kind of inconvenient. This also looks like a lot of wasted space. That is prime real estate for me. This looks like such a waste, but that's how it is. Oh, wait, I can do no better, actually. Unless this is an MC4000. If this is an MC4000... And you don't use your P0, then I can actually route like the, the, this. And it's fine, and that takes up not much space. Okay, so let's imagine I could maybe do that. So if you're harvesting, you need to send out a... M okay, so you need to request... Find match. Something has to kick that off. I'm not sure what. Uh, I also need to actually get these. So yeah, I need all those X pins, don't I? Probably. Uh, probably. So yeah, you are the one that these would connect to. Blah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hate where all of that is. That is disgusting. It's impossible to move these down, right? If I could move them down, I could have something up there, and that would compact a little better. So you would go in there. Uh, P1. It might not be your P1. It's going to have to be, isn't it? Because at this point, Harvest can't escape, can it? Yeah, nothing works with that. Yeah, nothing works. Hold on, could I cross these streams and get something done? No. No, I cannot. It's just that obnoxious about it. Just this little cutout is killing me here. What about... No, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't do anything. I'm just, I cannot do anything. Like, I, I hate the way this lays out. But that's just how it has to be. Just the puzzle is that mean about it. Why was I trying to route this to the top? Because it's a simple pin, and I want to put it into the l right side of an MC6000. And this feels like it wastes space because I need access to those Xbus pins, which is going to have to be done something like this, I guess, in actuality. I don't know. Sure, those are connected now. Okay, so you would connect to that X3. You send a request. And, I don't know, you'd connect to this controller somehow. Um, I need to get this not connected to Radio TX. But let's just pretend it's not connected. Okay, so... Uh, uh, 
So once you report your things to X0... Oh, you need to... Somebody... Right, okay, so... Uh, so somebody's going to come into you with... Um, destination coordinates. So right, every tick I want to report to these where they want to be. Uh, that's not X1. That's X... Okay, yeah, I have my, my coordinates all wrong. Um, to X2, I want to move the thing from X1. And I also want to do it to X3. So... I know I'm working very backward here, it's fine. So that's where the coordinates come in, and you won't be reporting back to X1. X1's job is done at this point, it doesn't care. You want... to request to find a match. Move 0, X0. So I ask for a match here. I move... X2, X0. I move X3, X0. Right, so I tell you your target coordinates. You tell me your current coordinates. Those go to the matcher. And tech X01, let's say. Okay, great. So that harvests. What else it also needs to do is to tell X0 to delete the current index. Delete index. So move 1, X0. That's deleting whatever the match was. Ah, so it should remember the index of the match. That's the only time I delete. Okay, so those commands are going to come in in sequence. Here we go. These are actually the same command. I do one part and I maybe do the second part. If a match is found, then I don't have to tell you anything. You can just do it. So find match and delete if found. Doing this wor weird reverse indentation here, that's fine. Find match and delete if found. Okay, here, I'm gonna fix it. I don't like the way that looks. Working on a real important part of my program here, the formatting of my note that tells me what to do. <laughs> Sometimes my brain just needs a little rest. I can switch tasks and... Oh boy, okay, so... Anyway... Yeah, so... This is plus one. Okay, so find match and delete if found. I don't have a find command in here. You're always just moving 0 to x2, the address line here. Right, so yeah, I don't have any add coord and I don't have any find. I have possibly a workable delete command. And I have get oldest coord. Just to make it clear that this is part of that, I'm going to do this. Well, right now, if I only have two commands, then I don't need the uh, any jumps in there. So I do like all the space that frees up. Is it actually just two commands to this? If someone else is writing the coordinates without telling you about it, then yeah, it really is just those. Get oldest and uh, find match and delete a fount. Okay. So we're getting somewhere. You have some instruction space. Maybe I can do something useful with that. Um, let's work on the very beginning of this. How does the radio look? Move X1, ACK. Take ACK 99 plus jump weight. Move X2, X3. Now, what was that? I already answered this question once today, but I forgot the answer. 
X2 is the address of that, right, so you move that to X3, which is this controller here. Right, and you keep track of where your Q head was. Okay, so that is irrelevant here. Yeah, because I no longer have a rotating ring buffer sort of thing going on, where the head and the tail both move down the Q. My tail stays put, and my head moves out, and then sometimes retracts a little bit. I feel like I'm using head and tail the wrong way around there, but I don't know. Again, it's just it, which way around do you want to think about it? You can think of it either way. Um, anyway, so uh, so I don't need to do this part. You have suspiciously few instructions in you. That is itty bitty. I like that. That's nice. Small is good. It makes me think maybe I can do some more work here. What else would you do? This wouldn't currently fit in you. Okay, so, um, right, so let's go through the entire control flow of what I want to happen. When I get a message, I want to write it to the this. I want to write it to the end of this. So I want... Where does A1 stay parked? Can I just write two things to D1 and have it always be the right thing? I probably, you probably want to send on a, a message to the rest of the program to go do its stuff. Uh, okay, right, so what this currently is expecting is that it will be sent, yes, I know this wire is going through TX, I'll fix it eventually. Um, maybe I should fix it now. Well, I don't want to think about it right now. Uh, if I have a big wire nest, the radio can go partially over top of it without disrupting anything. It, it uniquely doesn't have any endpoints on those sides. I really hate this bridge here. Can I do something about it? No, maybe. If I swap these two, and I bridge that, oh, that just blocked off my X2. If I bridge, no. If I... It's this whole layout again, forcing me to bring that P1 up there. I'd switch you to X1. Can you bridge over there in any way somehow? It doesn't look like it to me. Oh, but here's a thing I could do. I could sneak... I could sneak this up here and out this P0. Then that would align... Okay, that could potentially be workable. Okay, so let's try some layout things, since you're not connected in anything, any meaningful way to anybody right now. In fact, most of you are not. I'm okay with deleting these wires, because everything has to change anyway. Yeah, you're gonna yell at me a lot. Uh, just here, don't, don't even go on the board. Go away. Shoo. Part not on board. That's right. It sure isn't. If I'd sneak this harvest line up here through this P0. You're not using your X1, so I can use it for other things. So I put you there. All right, so that P0 is going through there. You can use your X1 and connect to this X2 here. Uh, oh, that looks like a great place to put my radio. I love it. Okay, here we go. That's a layout that agrees with me. And it doesn't even matter if I do the X0, so I don't have to modify this program. You can both be the same. There we go. That's much nicer. Okay. Okay, so I got my P1 to harvest. 
I got my X3 to the motor Y. I got my X2 to the motor X. And that is the order that I have them there. Cool. And my X1 and X0 are both free for communicating to the outside world. Great. So, a uh, radio interface here. Yeah, okay. So I can put you down here. X3 talks to radio. So the idea is you would receive two coordinates. I don't think that's what I want though. Maybe it is though, actually. Okay, so when you receive coordinates, no, I don't want to pass coordinates onto this. I want to write them to the, the D1 line here. Okay, so let's say I did this. I then want, okay, yeah, so that's fine to connect to this, I think. In this position, I can expand you to 6,000 if I need. And everything still works great. I like where this is going. I'm working on a bunch of pieces at once. I love the compactness of this. This still looks a little gross, but now that I managed to put these all together in one big block here, uh, I'm actually happy with how this routes. It's gonna bite me that I'm jumping around between so many parts of my program, right? But see, I have to do the whole thing at once. The layout problem feeds into the code problem, feeds into the design problems. They're all interrelated. You gotta do them all at once. Okay, so when you've received new coordinates, they're getting written out to D1. So I'm trusting that A1 is at a good place for writing new coordinates. I think I can arrange that. It will be left that way It will not be left that way after I write, after I uh, do these things. Well, I could arrange that. You have a couple of instructions spare. Enough instructions to move x3 ac sub 2, move ac x3. Okay, so you could maybe do that. I don't know if I want to. But that's a way, you, you do have the room to reset that after you've done that operation. And that's the only other, that's the only other one who would ever touch that pointer. So yeah, and you can just write to the end of it. Perfect. Okay, I like that. Okay, great. So, uh, you will do that. I wonder if I could have this. This is not using its registers. This could remember the current thing it's going for. Does it need to? Probably not. I might need some special handling for case zero here. Because again, there is a tick here where nothing's happening and I need this not to go and harvest its own space. That does actually sound like a detail I can just tuck in at the last minute. That one should not have to, just wherever it fits, I can, I can make that happen. That should not have to necessitate big design changes unless I'm super crunched for space. And right now I'm not. Like look, extra space, extra space, extra space, extra space, extra space. Big unoccupied spot on the boards. I like where this is going so far. Okay, so great. When you receive a new coordinate, you move it to the end of wherever this pointer is left, and no one touches it except the one who deletes stuff, and that one moves it back into place. Cool. Uh, sub 2 is correct, right? No. No, it's not. No, it's not, because you go to where the zeros are, so that'll write to there. Okay, so I need something more here. I can maybe sprawl out into this space, make this an MC6000 to do something smarter, but... If I'm... Oh, hey, check it. I know what I can do. Here's what I can do. I won't have to do this. 
if during my loop I move x3 to ack, move ack x0, and then tech ack 0. Oh, that's better. When I hit the first 0, I write it. Hang on, what's this move 0 x2 business? Oh, that's nothing. Oh, that's resetting that the wrong way. Okay, great. So uh, then I can go back and move x2 ack sub to move ack x2. Okay, so hang on. Did I think about this right? Wait to get a request. Uh, I need to write some about what your assumptions are. Preconditions for delete are... Um, a0 is at deletion index. I do move 0 to x2 to initialize that to the beginning. A0 is at deletion index? That's not what this assumes. Wait, move x0, x2. Okay, right. Uh, A0 is at deletion index. And uh, is sent over x1 and is also sent over x1. Those are the only preconditions, right? Yeah, so it tells me what address to put in A1, right? So those are going to be at the same address. That's the deletion I... Wait, no. No, hang on. This needs to be offset by 2. Move x3, ack. x3 is d1. So you read d1. This is the one that's ahead. a0 is as, as at deletion index plus 2. Yeah, that doesn't fit. Is sent over x1. I don't have room for arithmetic here if I'm using this layout. So move x0, x2, and this also clears the IO line, of course. Um, is it okay not to send a completion signal here? I hope so, because I'm not sending one. Yeah, just hope the timing works out. It should. Uh, okay. Anyway, where, where was I? So I was ensuring that my address management here allows me to do these commands. It does. So I always park A1 at the... Right, yes, I always park A1 at the head of the queue, where the newest things are added. Uh, move x3 ack move ack x0 I always write the 0 and if I have hit a 0 then I know I'm at the end of the thing yep okay so that's how I detect the end that's great move x2 ack Right, sub 2, move ack x2. Right, so this fixes the address. All right, so when you hit your first 0, all right, so let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. I'm deleting 2 and 3. So the... So a0 starts here. It'll only half delete, but that's fine. Uh, I can have half a coordinate. Okay, so let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm deleting 2, 3. So A0 starts at index 2. I send 4 over x1 this way. Uh, you're going to have to construct that 4, yes. 
And you're also going to have to set that too, yes, so you have a bunch of work to do, but look at all this spare instruction space, and that's where that can go. I also need the fine match, though, I don't even have that. That worries me a bit. Well, that's what the space is for. Okay, so, uh... How am I gonna wire that? I don't know yet. Worry about it later. Maybe all of this will move right, maybe. Anyway, um... One more time. A0 is set to index 2. 4 is sent over x1. So A1 gets set to 4. That's here. Read from D1. So index data at index 4 gets read into here. It is not 0. It's, it's 5. And that's 6. 5 gets written over 2. This pointer advances because I wrote something. This pointer advances because I read something. The value I read was not 0. So it jumps to the loop. Okay, so right, pointers advanced. So I read a 6. I write it here. So 1, 2, 5, 6. Uh, 5, 6 is what's currently in this. A0 is here, A1 is here. So I loop around. I pull the next value out. This is sub 1, by the way. Because I'm doing by 1s. This knows nothing that it's pairs of coordinates. That information is implied by the, the state of the address pointers when this is put in. So yeah, this can delete an arbitrary arbitrary sized chunk out of the middle of a 100p14. Great. Uh, right, so I I read that zero. So this is again one, two, five, six, five, six, zero. So I read this zero. A1 moves here. I write the zero. So A0 moves here, right? So one, two, five, six, zero, six is what this will end up being. So I wrote that. So A0 ends here. A1 ends two past, which is here. I want it to be one back, which is why I changed this two to a one, so that new coordinates being written will go to that spot. Okay, yeah, so this is where it does know that th 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 these are pairs of things. The rest is just implied by the preconditions. Okay, sweet. So, I think that all more or less works. At least the logic seems sound. So, now to actually invoke that. Add coord, not actually an operation here. That's implied by the preconditions of what A1 is set to. You do that, that's fully covered. So I have the delete logic, but I don't f have the find match and delete if found logic. Okay. So I need to search. This thing invokes the search on x1, which is connected to nothing. So that'll go to the x0 here. Yes, that's fine. That route's great. SLX x0, actually, because that's how you talk to this controller. Wait, no. Hold on. Uh... Yeah, okay. You do need a heartbeat signal here of sorts. I think... And I need a test for whether I'm just sitting here at zero. Yeah, so I need an idle test somewhere, somehow. It's never idle once it gets going. There's no... There's nothing in the spec for uh, resting once I've harvested all the things. It's just once it's going, there's more to harvest than this will... There's exactly as much to harvest as this can keep up with. But at the beginning, it does rest. So tell me, just out of curiosity, how long does it rest in the... Just for the one tick? Okay. Hmm. I might be able to cheat with at sleep one. I don't get to see the future test cases, though, so I don't know whether that cheat would work. I should assume it will not. Uh, okay, so anyway. Uh... So what happens? When you get a coordinate, you write it to here. Whether you've gotten a coordinate or not, you need to tell something 
to this thing. I think that something can be... So this is where I request oldest coordinates. So you would move negative one to x zero, move x zero to x two, move x zero to x two. Okay, so you ask for the oldest coordinates, that goes here. Move x two to x one, move x three to x one, move zero to x zero. That means nothing. Okay, so this is supposed to be x1 for talking to you. Okay, so you're requesting find match and delete a fa- Okay, yeah, so you're trying to find the match. So that means move 1. So you tell it you want to, uh... I want to know if these two coordinates, which these are reporting their current location, is harvestable. And then if you send me a one, I'm going to harvest. Otherwise, I won't harvest. Uh, right, and I don't need to tell you anything about uh, my... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Man, all this extra instruction space here. Maybe you can do some actual work. Because you're the one who kicks off the find command. But what pre-processing can I do on that beyond what I'm doing here? I don't know, maybe some. Uh, maybe you could find it yourself. No, you don't have any pins left. I was thinking you could do like 14 uh, iterations through here and do the, the comparisons on your own. Oh, hey, these, this data needs to be stored somewhere while I'm searching for it. Right, I had this whole idea with this simple pin. Okay, that might still happen. So dat register and simple pin while ack counts, maybe. Or dat register and ack register while a0 counts for matching. That's actually pretty plausible. Okay, so I send you a 1 and I need to get... No, I, I, I send you a 1... And I need to get back a 1 or a 0 based on whether a match was found. You don't care where that match was. You do. You're going to send that on to the deletion. Okay, great. Uh, so let's write that part. Well, let's write both of these. First, let's do the get oldest coord. It's done. Great. Okay, that's that's all there is to it. Uh, I probably do want to jump wait here. Because I'm going to have some conditions and stuff here. I don't even need the TCP. Um, I can just do tech x3 negative 1. So I don't think any other information goes into here. It's just those things. Okay, so move x1, x3, move x1, x3. Yeah, so you just tell this negative 1 and then it gives you back two values. Okay, great. Yeah, so a0 is sort of the the scratch register that can go wherever. When I'm searching, I do indeed want this at zero. So you will do that unconditionally. Okay, great. So two values come in through x3. Move x3 to... Whoa. Move x3 to... Yeah. I'm pressing the right arrow key right now and it's not going. Somehow that doesn't have keyboard focus. Move x3 ack, move x3 dat. That. Uh, so. Yeah, okay, you need to do a lot of things. Oh, hey, um, so one additional thing you can do... You're also going to do the ack and dat thing. Um, neat, okay. So I think that's how I'll do my zero, 0 detection. 
and that fit exactly. How clean and elegant. I love it. Okay, so uh, that's how I do my zero zero detection. You will ask for a match for zero zero. And I'm gonna continually tell the, end, the, the, the motors to go to zero zero and that's completely fine with that code in place. Great, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay, so you're full exactly, you're full exactly. You two have some extra room. You don't have enough room. This is what I'm concerned about. I don't have enough room here to find and set up the preconditions for this. Like there's some arithmetic that has to happen. But let's try. Uh, oh hey, I can maybe do this trick where I don't jump here, I put all of these under a minus condition and then set my, con my loop continuation to do that. That might be possible here if I can, if I need one more line and I can fit it. That's a way to do it, maybe. Check ack, whatever is connected to D0, that's X1. Plus tech. I think I need that plus though. So let's hope it fits tech that x1. So if it's a match on both, move one x3, jump weight. Um, you're also going to need to do the other stuff. Uh, ooh. So, couple of problems here. I'm gonna need one of those because I have to, uh, I have to advance the pointer if I get a mismatch on X. Otherwise, we'll miss a line. So, I'm very out of lines here, by the way. Um, I want to write the rest of this program just so I know... Okay, well, you know what? Here. So with the rest of that program out of the way, let's just see how much space this takes up and what it ends up looking like. Tech X1 plus tech dat X1 minus move X1 null. Uh, this minus needs to go there because I don't want it for this tech. Okay. Plus tech dat X1 plus. Okay, so minus jump loop. One X3 minus jump loop. Okay, so right. So when I move a one, what are the conditions of my address registers? Oh, hey, this is going to loop forever until it finds a match. I have no breakout condition beyond that. Minus Oh, hang on. Uh, I can do... I don't get to read the value of these, so I'm just going to compare all the way down for all the potential values. So I'm actually just going to have to do minus TLT... Uh, T GT X2, the A0 line. 0, 1, okay, so that's 13, 12, 11. Or no, it's actually minus T, L, T, uh, yes, okay. So I want this to fail if you are here or here. So if you're beyond the bounds of that, I want this condition to fail and you'll fall through. That means here in all, in the pluses, yeah, you just fall through going back to idle. Here in the pluses, I need to set up the preconditions for deletion and tell it to delete. Okay, so that's why I wrote all these. A0 is at deletion index plus two. 
It is. That's just where it sits. Perfect. So... Move A0 AC. Uh, A0, right. Um, A0 is X2. Move X2 AC. Sub 2. Move AC. X0. Okay. So I think this is a plausible... This is a plausible um, find and initiate delete. Uh, missing one thing here. The one thing is returning zero if I don't find something. How am I going to do that? Oh boy, good luck. Uh, so uh, what this is revealing is I'm going to need a controller with just these instructions in it, and these will have to go elsewhere. I think that's fine. All this is is get first two thingies. Yes, someone else can do that. I'm going to need more I.O. space. I can't get it here. Okay, so somehow I'll need more I.O. space. Okay, so an expander or something. What's great is I have all this room here. I have the room to do this. I think I'm getting close. I haven't started running my program yet. This is like <laughs> mostly new code, so there are probably lots of bugs in it. Um... Okay, so the hang on. Am I am I done with this portion? The whole find match and delete if found. I think this all works. Hold on, right. Uh, I don't have the return zero part. How will I return zero if no match is found? I would love to do it based on uh, the result of this. However, if I put a plus instruction here, that's going to be gone to from this. Okay, I know what to do. Uh, do I? I don't have a register here. Nah, I don't have an extra register to... Ye oh, hang on. Okay, so I can discard the registers when I'm done looping through here or when I find a match. So right here is where match is found. I could set dat to one and send dat at the end regardless. Okay, so... Yeah, because I'm doing this trickery to stay in the loop. Uh, okay, is there? there's probably just a better way I can do this. I need this line to be unconditional. Kinda. Okay, and the way I do that is... Right, so I already sent the data. You do all that stuff, you jump to wait. When you get down here to the very end, then you just move 0 to x3. Okay. I think that fits. All right, so you will have to receive just exactly X coordinates, Y coordinates for matching. No, uh, none of none of these uh, commands or anything. Just like only wake up when I want to find a match. So you store them in your registers. Check ack X1, right, so you do a compare. You discard if the first compare fails, you do a second compare with the other register. If you find a match, return one. The, 
This does no operations with this until the next tick, so it is safe to return immediately, because you're not going to be mutating anything in here while deletion is happening. Okay, that's great. I think this is taking shape. I have a good feeling here. Wait till I run this and discover I didn't read something else in the spec. <laughs> uh, move X to... Uh, okay, right, so where was I? Right, so you return one. You read your current address, perform arithmetic on it, and send that... Right. So where you read from in D0 is already set perfectly after the match. Where you're writing to, to overwrite, is two below that. So this sets up the preconditions and then moves that value out here. That's pretty nice and simple. I love it. I also like that this worked out for insertion so that I don't, didn't have to reroute all these wires. So like this inner part, the A0 and D0, don't need to be accessed from the outside world. Uh, I am still missing lookup oldest, but that's easy. Someone, anyone, can just hook up to D1 and A1 and do that on their own when these are idle. And I will know when these are idle, so that's completely fine. I have an I.O. problem here, but I'm sure it's solvable. Who actually requests lookup oldest? It is you, technically. It doesn't have to be. Oh, I can do this. Um... This is the only time you talk to X0. So I can just send a command onto someone here who sends a command onto here. Yeah, okay, great. So I don't need this microcontroller to connect to this microcontroller. Perfect. I do need this to connect to this. So those need to stay. Uh, oh, hey, I can uh, delete a line here. Or, uh, what the heck is this? Move one X1. Move X2, ac that. What am I doing? Something looks very wrong here. So SLX X... Hold on. Um, right, so finish going through this. Uh, I set up the preconditions and then I am done. Uh, so I return to my value and I'm, I'm just done. Great. I don't care where A0 is. Do I? I do. I got to set it to zero initially. Well, so why not do this? Loop all the way around. The junk at the end is going to potentially match something because I will have junk values in here that I'll be comparing against. One half will get overwritten with a zero, the other won't. Ooh. Yeah, that's no good. In fact, that already was a bug with this approach. Okay, so that's a design flaw here. Hmm. Design flaws have effects all the way downstream of them, so I have to fix this now. I can't do anything out here until that part is solved. All right, fine. Uh, but anyway, the idea would be that you detect an end somehow, and you... Uh... You return false because you found no matches. Like, if I kept my data clean, like if deletion zeroed one beyond, can I zero one beyond? No, I can't, I can't go one back with this, right? I don't think so. Hmm. Like, this already fits so snugly. I mean, I could try and just hope I get lucky with the test cases, but it runs, like, a lot of tests. It runs 80 tests. One of them is going to have something in row or column zero with a previously used coordinate, and I'm going to get a match when I don't want a match. 
So somehow I have to keep track of the head of the queue? Okay, this introduces a big problem, doesn't it? Maybe... Okay, maybe someone out here could keep track of where it thinks the head of the queue is. And instead of one, I would actually report the X2 line. But that could be zero. Okay, well, sure. This could be negative one. So negative one means nothing found. That sounds fine. All right, so you'll send back the address at which you found the thing. I could maybe have an extra... Yeah, actually, that takes care of this. Okay. Yeah, so somebody counts up when something is added and counts down when it's deleted. Who does that? I don't know, this hypothetical extra microcontroller here, probably. Maybe. Okay, so, right, so I have some flex here because I would detect past end of queue a different way. Like, you'd get a match on zero, sure, but it would tell you an address that's beyond where I think the, the end is. Okay, so that's fine. I, I solved my problem. You loop all the way around and report your thing. Okay, you're done. Now, how do I use you? Next problem I think I want to solve is to get the oldest record. All I need to do is read the first two rows and then return the address pointer to how it was. I can do that with some little dude here. That's perfectly avoidable, I think. Um, you do kind of need to go right in this position, though. I'm going to have to route around this in a silly way. Okay, that's, that actually wasn't too bad. You won't use your X3. Oh, who talks to you? How? Oh, you. You do. You do because you don't talk to... Okay, so again, I need some silly routing. Mm, this just became kind of impossible, didn't it? Okay, well, what if I put this down here instead? I block off the P1 pin with your P0, both of which are not being used. You need to be able to talk to this, but you're the only one. It's actually just you. It's exclusive access to that. Now, this needs to connect down there. Which I think I can do... Nope, 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 that doesn't work. But if I swap these pins, then I can. Okay, so... Your X0 now goes to that. Your X1 now goes to this. Great, perfect, perfect, perfect. Imperfect. Not quite right. Uh... Okay, so A1 can connect... Th okay, this is problems. Problems because of the space. If your X1 needs to connect to something on this, can I put this here? Yes! Check it. There we go. There's my data line, there's my address line. Okay, cool. So this goes to that. Neat, so that's your X1 connection. You still have your X1 connection. You can talk to the address and the data. Perfect, okay. Why are you connecting to the... Oh, yeah, right, because you're doing the talking. Sure, that's fine. Okay, so... Um, you can probably get away with being a little dude. I'm not going to do that until I see that I only have nine instructions in here, though. So it's like X2. Uh... So, you just give it a ping, really. I don't care what you ping it with. Uh, so, I really can just... Oh, check it. I can do better. I'll move zero. And that's what I'll reset A1 to. No, I can't. No, because you don't know what the A1 value is supposed to be. Okay, so move X0, ack. Just save it away. Um, Yeah, I'll figure out if there's anything I can do with this particular value later. I don't think there is. Move X1. That D1 line. Mm -hmm. To X2. Move X1, X2. Move... Okay, this extremely fits in uh, 
one of these. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> it very fits. And I change that to X3. SLX X3. Move X3, no. Move X0, ack. Move X1, X3. Move X1, X3. Move ack, X0. Look at that tiny little thing. All right. So read those first two. Oh, wait. Uh, there's one more thing. Move zero. Oh, check it. Here we go. Move X3, X0. So that's where I write the address. Perfect. So that's what the zero is. So yeah, read from zero twice, send it back, and then put it back to how it was. Sweet. Okay. Uh, so you're done. All right. So I have my lookup. I have my... Okay, so what's missing here? This is all completely obsolete, so that goes away. This is this stays. These are important, in case I need to know them. Was there a problem with this? I needed, right, the missing piece. The one remaining missing piece is knowing where my Q head is. No one is counting that. I'm going to run this and see how it goes without the... I'm going to just run it now. Okay. So you don't sleep. Why? Oh... Okay, all that's wrong here is I have my X0 mixed up with X1. It's just X1. Back X0, okay. So who not sleep? Both of you, blocked on write, blocked on then read, okay. So what does this attempt to do? Like, I don't know where my program is at this point. I don't have a definite unfinished portion other than, yeah, keeping track of Q head, and I want to see how far it gets without tracking that. X3 ack, so that's the radio. Rx, great. Tech ack, negative 99, it is. Plus jump weight. Oh, oh, this is left out. No, 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 that's correct. That is, that is a correct weight. So move 0 to x0. What? No. You got the wrong pin. That's the problem. Oops. Okay, so you had the wrong pin. That was the problem. All right, so I request that you read the first two of those and tell them to me. Uh, that address is at zero. Oh, uh, so this. This knows where the Q head is. It's kept there. Oh, okay. So, um... Maybe you can communicate with this to see where that is. Maybe. All right, so that logic can be here. I could make this a big boy again and uh, do stuff with that. All right, so that actually kind of just came built in there. The first time, every time that's requested, that gets refreshed. And yeah, new data is written there. Sweet, I love it. That's great. Okay, that just kind of works. All right, so I know how I'll fix that problem. And if I don't have another unimplemented part of this, then it's just debugging and then I'm done. So here comes a zero, great. We're going to zero, zero. Here comes the other zero. Uh, what? What's happening? State read, move X2. X1. State right. Move X1. Not zero. X2. Huh. Wait. X2. Oh, oh. I, uh, this is wrong. Is something in the wrong order here or something? It kind of is, right. So the first thing you need to do is tell coordinates to these. So I need to actually move x0 to x2. I don't know what this thought it was doing before, but it didn't make any sense. All right, so how's that look? 0, x1, x0, x0. That sounds better already. Okay, so x2. Somebody gets a something. Uh, you got a 0, mm -hmm, as expected. Other zeros coming in and going to you. I also have a problem here where those are both x2. One of them should be x3, this one. Okay. Uh, something went over this line. 
a one. It should not have. That's right. That was the line I needed to delete. Okay. Because, yeah, you don't get an initial command. You just get two values to match. Great. So that's one line freed up in here, and these will free when I'm doing whatever with that. So I'm going to request that you tell me... Yeah, okay. So, um... You'll probably move x3 to ac and then test what it is, and then... The other command is to get the location of the... Okay, but... Yeah, okay, so you report an index. I would compare what you report to what you return. Let's just write that now. Because, like, why would I not? I'm going to make a copy of this. Uh, I'm not going to bother messing with the name. So, working solution copy. <laughs> okay. So, uh... This might actually be tiny. Not tiny enough. All right. Oh, how do you talk to this? Hmm, you're out of pins. That could be a problem. I could have a third command here, have you have the actual connection to this, and you just communicate to that. So the third command would send a message over this line somehow, somewhere. Nah, yeah, no, that's fine, that's doable. If I have the space for it, so let's, let's see how this works first. What? Uh, if you get a negative one, uh, I just want to report. Uh, move ack x3, I guess. That's your communication line for both. You won't both do it at the same time, so that's fine. Okay, so when you get a zero, you do this. So the plus case right okay so I can do this uh, uh, okay um So if I send that command, I just need to shuffle x3 to x2. I'm probably going to swap these two because that'll route better. Actually, it might not. I don't know yet. Uh, no, I think this route's fine. Uh, move x3 to x2. X, yeah. x2. Move x2 x3 move x uh right no i need so two parameters go in one parameter comes out right yes yes so you get you receive x and y x and y go there and index found or negative one if not found comes back okay good uh, so this works. And yeah, and I can request your... the index of the greatest whatever. Okay, cool. So you're a busy dude. Uh, but essentially you're just an IO expander, more or less. Um, okay, so... X3 is the line that wants to be connected to this here. Now this line wants to connect to... Yeah, okay, it does route better if I swap those. Because I can do that, put a bridge here, and connect this. Okay, great. So swap x2 and x3. There's a lot of both of those. Don't make any typos. Okay, done, I think. 
What an incredibly complicated program. So, you can go away. You're nothing. This is fully covered by something else, and I don't even know what at this point, but I know it's it's done. Like, that's, that's just irrelevant. This is the only relevant note anymore. All right. Look at this board packed full of stuff. This is looking like a appropriate complexity for what this problem is. Even got space for another microcontroller here if I if I want to pack one in somehow. I don't have any pins, but I have some space. <laughs> well, here's where this note can live then. No, it lives next to this because it's about this. So, how are we looking? Uh, I made these APIs, but I'm not using them yet. Okay, so let's go through all this again. Get the radio signal. If it's something, then write them to X1. X1? Okay, so immediately that's a problem. If it's something, you write it to X0. Maybe I'd swap that at some point. So right, so you write the data. I probably did swap that at some point. Yes, I remember doing it. I remember plunking that in there. Okay. Uh, but I didn't swap them in code. Move 0 to X1. That's the get oldest data command. Okay. Move X1, X2. Looks right, looks right, looks right. Great. Okay. Uh, so when you get data, move x0 to x2, right, so that's the coordinate you want to be at, the oldest that you read out of there. So the two motor controllers get that, then they tell you where they currently are. Those go into these registers? No, they don't. No, they do something different. Right, yeah, so this is the part of the program I haven't written yet. Here is where, um, so what's going to happen is this will become x2, this will become x3, all of this becomes detection of whether Okay, now hold on, okay, no, I first want to get the result of the find, I guess. Yes. Yes, get the result of the find. And then ask you what your position is so I can find out if the result of that find is beyond the head of the queue. This does three things. What's the third? So this is how I report your current ACK. This is how I get the first two values. What's this? Ah, that's forward your message onto this. Right, so that's when I tell it. Okay, so I need to send that request. So over X1, I first need to move. Uh, okay, so you need a note. Uh, zero equals report oldest coordinates. I can write out the full word there. Negative one equals report uh, Q head address. One equals this alignment bothers me. I fixed it. One equals forward message to match and delete. Okay, so that's the IO expansion portion of that. Great. So one is the message that I'm sending there. Thanks for the reference. Okay. So move one to X1. Uh, then what? Uh, 
Then I move these and they will be forwarded as appropriate. Okay, so then I move x1 to ac or dat. I won't be arithmeticing on it, so I'll just put it in dat just to make that clear. So there is one case where I, okay, so this is complicated. Um, there's one case where I harvest and two cases where I don't. There, there, there are two ways not to harvest. It's either that this comes, okay. So if this comes back with a negative one, oh, you know what else I could do? Let's just make that a large number so this can be one case. So the one case is the number that comes back is beyond the known end of the queue here. So I read that into that. I actually only need to do one comparison, so I don't think you're gonna use your registers. Okay, so while you are working on, oh wait, no, I do need to read it into that because I gotta clear this IO line so you can receive another command. Okay, that's fine. You'll hang on to it for that purpose because I need to send you another command. Right, you're a busy boy. You'll do three thingies each tick. That's fine, okay, great. So now I send you the negative one command. Negative one, X one. You are the X one of both this and this. So that makes that easy to remember. So I tell you negative one, that's going to report the Q head address, one single scalar, which I compare to the value that came back from this. If this value is less than that, TLT dat X one, the value that comes back on your X one line, then I found a match that is within the queue. Okay. Uh, plus move 100 P1, minus move zero P1. There we go. So how does it look? Let's step. Oops, whoa, right. I'm gonna press E for that, but I need to not have keyboard focus. First of all, can I advance a unit? Yes, and it didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Well, sure. So whatever happened on the first unit, it's happy. Okay, so. I worry about timing. I, there's a lot of simultaneous stuff, but I think it's all... I think there isn't any simultaneous stuff. Delete would be the very last thing to happen. Oh, do I ever tell this to delete? Yes. That's implied by find a match. Negative one reports Q head address. Ooh, that's going to happen while delete is happening. Okay, so I may have a timing issue there. I can fix that by doing this in a different order. So first, I ask for the current Q head address. The one command does that. The negative one command report Q head address. Yeah, okay, right, so that's fine. Uh, move X1, ACK. Or uh, that can go to dat, and I can TLT x1 dat. So just remove this, get rid of that, and that should work. Okay. So you still manage to advance that one unit. Okay, great. So what's going on? Here comes a new coordinate. Seven gets written there. What are you doing down there? Okay, it just went there during this. Why? Hold on, why are you down there? I imagine there's a reason that I will understand when I see it, but currently I don't know why you're all the way down there. I would believe here, but like way the heck down there? Okay, so you're requesting oldest coordinates. They are zero, zero. X, zero, act. Of zero, yeah, okay, right, so, right, so that's manipulating the A1 pointer. So you get zero, zero, sure, as expected. Great, uh, okay, request Q head address. Yes, that is at zero, that's correct. That's actually the address of the next thing that would be put in Q. 
Uh, I think this logic still works, but I might, I, if I have to tweak it, I can. I have instruction space. Check it out. Room to grow. TCP X. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this is a negative one. So I just want to report what's in. Ah. Oh. 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 oh, oh. Obvious problem. Reporting the uh, using this register for multiple things. So you are dat. You are dat. You are dat. So dat is the command you receive. Ack is the actual address, and you will necessarily have received a zero, which will have written to ack. So I'm just using that leftover value for reporting there, and it should be fine. That might explain why. No, that doesn't explain. Okay, so that has a different explanation. But it was a bug that I now have fixed. Okay. This is why stepping through is useful even when, you know, even when I'm not specifically looking for something. Okay. So you reported the oldest two. It was zero, zero. You got zero, zero. You're not moving anywhere. I'm glad I already wrote these because it's not entirely simple. Didn't have to worry about it today. This is already complicated enough. Okay, so I request Q head address, which is in fact zero. I get it back and it is in fact zero. So then I tell you, I want to write to this controller. So you're going to use your IO expansion capabilities to be able to do that. So I take the incoming current X coordinates of the motor or the, uh, the harvester. I put it here, you forward it on to this. It's zero, zero goes there, okay. The other one is also zero. Okay, ack is zero, dat is zero, so nothing much is happening. You read the X1, you tested, it was... It was a match, actually. That was also a match. So now you move the address out to X3. Sounds great. Then you take the address and you're going to do math on it. And oh, you're deleting that because you found a match. That's fine. It's extra work, but it's fine. It's not a problem. Uh, you all are done, by the way. I didn't pay attention to what you did, but yeah. Okay, so that's going to delete. It's going to do a bunch of math here. Uh, ah, I see. Um, right, because this always does an operation before trying to break out of the loop. And that seems okay with me. All right, it's extra work, but it's fine. Oops. And a unit completed. Okay, so number two. A coordinate comes in. Seven, four gets written here. Uh, I tell you to, uh, what did I tell you? I told you zero, which means report oldest coordinates. So seven, four should come back and go here. All right, the zero, move the seven. Here's the seven. It goes eventually over somewhere. Here we go, there's the seven. Four is gonna come in. Nothing is gonna happen different from the first unit until... Uh, well, okay, sure, the motor's moving, of course. This might just work. I might be able to click this button and just see the thing work, but I wanna step through at least one unit before I start advancing frame by frame. Then I'll press the simulate button. Uh, if this works, then I'll just, just advance and see how it goes. So, uh, I've told this to report the queue head address. It's currently doing it. It did it. Dat is two. Yes, that's the queue head address as I expect it to be. Now I tell it that I want to send a message. The message is the one those are sending me. It goes in there. Okay, so ack is one, dat is one. Right, that's where the motor is. This will get no matches. Next one, null. Right, so I got not a match. I, ah, oh, this didn't initialize to zero. 
What? Oh, I gotta fit another line in there for that. Ooh. I don't like that. You just assumed A0 would be at zero. Okay, so this is broken currently. You're the only one who has access to A0. I have basically no spare X pins. I could maybe, like, do something completely ridiculous and route this all the way in there, but I don't think there's any way. I mean, this is a complete impasse here. So if anybody's going to uh, uh, mutate A0, it's you. Yeah, your X2. That's Oh, hang on. So that's all the way over there. It's more plausible to connect to this wire than to connect all the way over here. But I don't know who would mess with that except you. Okay, so compact this somehow. Get... Get one line out of here so that I can uh, move a zero to X2. That's not a thing I can overload. Okay, right. So, yeah. So, yeah, no, you, you needed to be this many lines, I thought. But I didn't try hard to compact you. Yeah, so X, X3, move X3, ah, move X3 dot. Yes, I need to save those in the registers, and I need a line right in here. Move 0, X2. Yes, and it needs to happen right there. Okay, so what can I eliminate here? What's this move ac X2 ACK thing? Right, okay, so you're doing address math. And here's a jump. Here's another one. All right, so I'm looking at the address math and thinking I might be able to compact that. Okay, so what do you do again? So read your parameters for matching. I do need to save those in the registers. Check for a match. Discard if not matched. Check for another match. Because you need to keep going when you don't find a match, so I can't shortcut this in some way. I think this just has to be how it is. I don't know, maybe there's some way to get around this and like do this. I don't want to do that unconditionally though. This is an this is an or statement. Those both have to be those both have to or sorry, no, this is an and statement. Those both have to be true to get to these lines. And if the first one is false, you still need to move the point. No, I, I think this is essential. So, whoa, that was not the tab key. I was one key off. <laughs> so then you move the address that you ended up at out to the your communication line. Then you do address arithmetic. Oh, check it. Uh, that doesn't save anything. If you move this to ACK, then send ACK over there. I mean, I can do it, but it doesn't save anything, right? Right, it doesn't. Because, yeah, I just need to move this to two places. Sub 2, move ACK X0, and this is all important preconditions so that this can do its work. Okay. Move ACK X0. Yes, okay, so the arithmetic address here. And then the jump weight. All right, how about this? Since you got some extra space. Yeah, you don't. I was wondering if I could unconditionally move this, as in delete this line. And just discard it somewhere downstream. The problem is... That would give this a variable number of uh, outputs, which would not work with my I.O. expander here. If it was going straight to this controller and I have those three extra lines, I can test if the value coming back is less than 999, and if it is, then discard the next one coming. But I can't do that with only one extra line here. 
and I can't have a variable amount of data coming through with this system. I think I see a way to do it. Okay. This just barely fits. Boy, oh boy, okay. This will be a little weird and a little hacky. So I'm gonna take this arithmetic out of here and put it there. Yes, I have this in between, but that's okay. I can fit one more line in here. So data from here goes to here, data from here goes to here, then data flows back from here to here, then one more value comes from here and goes in there. That value is going to be what was returned here minus two. So this means move ack, or this means move x2 to x0, Yes. And in the 999 case, I will simply move x to null. Right, yeah, and you have the jump, so that doesn't happen if that. And that is just barely enough space to fit a move 0x2 in here. Okay. So I got the extra instruction forwarding. Uh, after you send a... One. You send those two, you take this back. So move x1 ack. TLT ack dat. Sub two move ack x1. Okay. So regardless, you're going to do this. You'll get a 997 back in uh, the case that you do this which is fine because you just discard it. Okay, I could believe that. Oh man, my controllers ended up real full. Well, I had a crunch, so, so yeah, I had to, had to add instructions wherever I could. I'm just gonna advance. Oh, I'm not. Move X3 dat. Okay, so something went wrong right away. X2, X3, X2, X3, X2, 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 X3. So none of this involves you. And the first interesting stuff is here. So you get a one. X2 goes to X1. Sure, X3 goes to X1, sure. X1 goes to ack. You got to move the zero, that's great. Ack x1, take that x1, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, you received that, right? Oh, uh, problem is this is supposed to be an x3. That's all. Okay. I had a typo. There we go. Okay, so, uh... Here we go. Write seven four. Do all the stuff. Match seven four. So you're matching, or actually match one one. You will not match, right? Okay, you start at zero. Mm -hmm. uh, non matching. Discard. Uh, you're gonna go through all your zeros, which is fine. Those will also be non matching. And then you break out of the loop there, and oh, hey, check it, it's all the way back at zero there. Oh. Huh, so this uh, technically doesn't need to happen once you've reached the end of the loop. Okay, I'll take your small efficiency gain. So this goes in the plus. So reinitialize after that, because no one else mutates a zero. relatively minor, but I will take it. All right, so testing against 1-1. One, one. No, something was wrong here. You started there. Okay, you know what? I won't take your efficiency gain because apparently I don't understand. Um, yeah, you ended up there. Oh, because you did a delete, of course. Yeah, delete writes to D0. Yeah, so you need to do it unconditionally there. That's fine. Just do it unconditionally there. Works for me. Okay, so test against your 1-1. One, one. 
You're going to go through the entire thing. Doesn't take you that long. Get no match. 999 comes back. And then I'm going to discard the 997 you're going to send back to me. So 999, TLT Act Dat. It is not. But regardless, I'm going to send that out. You'll send it there. What? Oh, dude. Dude, why, why, how, how do I keep typing that? Here, let's just go there. Okay, uh, yeah, so you're waiting to discard that value. 997 goes in, you're done with your job, you discarded it, you're asleep, you're asleep, you're asleep, you're asleep, everybody's asleep. So nobody harvested, but the engine's moved. Sweet. That went into the queue, sweet. All right, I'm just gonna advance now. Does harvest happen? Let's look, f okay, so let's watch what happens when a match is supposed to happen. That did some operations, it's gonna put it back the way it was. To there, right, that's the head of the queue. Uh, okay. So I'm requesting the head of the queue. I get back eight. Uh-huh. I... Right, so harvest is supposed to happen imminently right now. Seven and four. So that should match index zero. So I should get a zero back. Actually, no, I get two beyond the match. So I get a two back. And it's going to turn into a zero, because that's where you're deleting from. Yes, I agree. This will be my first real delete. Deletes have been happening on zeros when I got the match. Like, on the first time unit, one happens. Um, but this is the first actual real one. So, I sub two. I send it back. You set the preconditions. Zero comes out here. All right. Your pointer will move to the correct place, because it gets reset. Okay, sweet. Move X3 ACK. You read a 7. It's... It... Oh, that's not right. I have these, like, reversed or something. What was that pointer doing all the way down there? Okay, so I have these reversed or something. I think I can just reverse the directionality of my... Uh... Yeah, okay. So I just have the, dir the, the directionality wrong. <laughs> it's going to keep copying. Okay, so let's just switch those two. So move X. Zero ACK. Move ACK X3. Okay. That's very plausible. Okay, so the harvest. Um, I'm going to control click... Here? Sure. Okay, so these are preconditions. I move that out there. You sub two, you move it to there. Uh, the zero goes here. You're already set to this. So now you're going to move in the other direction. So nine will copy over seven. It did. Four will copy over four. Great. Eight will copy over nine. It didn't. Oh, right, it takes a moment. Uh, then zero should go over that seven. It did. That six will be untouched. You'll break out of the loop. That stale six will stay there and nobody cares. Uh, yes, nobody cares because I check my queue head. So even if I get a match on a zero six at some point, it's okay because that's past the known queue head. Yes, this is at the end of a tick, so you will refresh your queue head state, and that'll be fine. Yes, and I reset it there. That's the queue head. Beautiful. It harvested. Fantastic. And this shouldn't harvest because there's no match. This will harvest. I'm clicking the simulate button. It broke. Well, got part of the way through. Okay. So what's the state of my thing when it breaks? I mean, hey, that's a partially working thingy. 
So where's the first? The first wrong one is here. You want to do something strange with that. What is that thing? Oh boy, okay, so the state of everything. You're moving and then you were moving there. Okay, so, so what's... It is exp... Okay, so hang on. So what's the difference? Um, no harvest happens and motor Y moves. Uh, what does... What does my this look like? Looks fine. One four, five one, three zero, three zero four. No, wait, hang on. One four, five one, X one Y four. What? That data looks wrong to me. You got an X zero Y four. You got an X one Y three. How do you have a one four there? Did my delete fail somehow? Hmm. Is there any one four anywhere in here? There is not. So my data here got corrupted. Okay, so something went wrong on delete. Maybe just reversing x3 and x0 was not the way to go. Okay, so let's check data integrity. After this, I expect 7-4 to come in. Okay, so it's going to be a while before you harvest. So 7-4 comes in. 9-4 comes in. Great. Looks fine. 8-5. Okay, so 7-4, 9-4, 8-5. Uh, you get a harvest and also get 7-6. So this should end up look okay, so you're harvesting seven, four. So this should end up looking like nine four eight five seven six. Nine four eight five seven six. The stale six is fine. Yeah, because the the A1 pointer is in the right place. The A0 pointer doesn't matter. Okay, so that data looks intact. Uh, you're going to harvest 9-4, so this should end up with 8-5-7-6. It does. Okay. 8-2 is being inserted at the end. 8-5 is being harvested. When does this go wrong? 8-2 went in, 8-5 went out. You still have the 7-6 you're going toward. That's the next one you're going to harvest. Uh, so there's your 8-2. Nothing else comes in, so this should just be 8-2. It is. Okay. 7-3 comes in. So this should be 8-2-7-3. It is. 8-2-7-3-1-1. A27311 looks good. So you're harvesting 82. So you should end up with 7311. You did. All right, you're harvesting 73, so you should end up with 1110. 1110. Oh. There's my problem. I can't use zero to detect the end of the, uh, the Q. Yeah, zero cannot be a marker value, so anything with a zero in it is doing that. All right, so this is a problem. I think I can fix it by changing it to B. So instead of when I read a zero, I stop. I check what the address is. So, okay, so when does this line happen? I think this is fixable without adding any lines of code. That's the important part. 
or actually, um, when does this happen? When that happens, what are you connected to? You're not connected A0, you have A1. A1 is at 2. Sub 1, move ack, X2. X2 is connected to... Move X2, ack, sub 1, move ack, X2. Yeah, see, now that's operating on the Q head. Because it relies on being able to stop when it hits it. Oh, no. So if I could initialize these with some kind of marker values, uh, or like add one to all inputs before they come in and do this based on that, that one's plausible. Because you have room to grow. So what if I let zero, just so I don't have to initialize this to like a negative one or something, some other marker value. Um, yeah, so anything that's initialized with will stick around as my terminator value. I just need a different terminator value. Alternate solution. Instead of doing any arithmetic at all, Okay, so that does cause problems, just expanding that. Alternate solution was going to be an at initializer to just write a bunch of negative ones to this. You're the only one that looks plausible for. Okay, so um, I'm going to rename this. Almost. Just need... Why is my spacebar not going off? I was being real weird about it. Uh, almost. Just need initial... Just need sentinel. That's what I'm going to call my value. I'm going to copy. I wonder what this one was that I saved away. I don't know, it's something old that I don't need to think about. Almost just need sentinel copy. So the sentinel value. All right, um, so right, I want to do some layout tasks here. So what's going to happen is this goes away. This comes here. Or does it come here? Maybe it goes there. It doesn't because that's that. Okay, so... All right, well, that took a really long time, but I'm starting to get something. This looks promising enough that I'll open my mouth again about it and kind of redo what I did here. So uh, I have this rerouting in progress thing. Still got the just need sentinel there. Um, I can't arrow key. I think there's a double space there. Doesn't matter. Okay, so anyway, um, so the difference is that I kind of flipped this vertically. So here's the, here's where everything originates. So right, I got my, whoops, um, got my, just need sentinel copy, just need sentinel. So if I need to go back here, I can. If I want to see what I partially did, I can. So I moved this over here. Radio flips to down there and actually flips around. Just gonna delete a lot of wires here. Uh, most of this goes away. I'll redo them all because everything's changing. That particular line there was kind of killing me having to go from this bottom IO expander thingy and message forwarder all the way up to this corner. Like diagonal lines are the worst uh, and I want to avoid them. Okay, so we're expanding this to an MC6000. Uh, not yet. First, I'm going to shuffle some things around just so I can keep them on the board. So this goes up, these go down. This expands. I think this is going to end up doing it. 
So the reason this really wanted to be down there is for access to these pins, but I think this whole task with the expanded instruction space can maybe just be done by you. You would lose your connection to the IO expander, but I think that's okay. I think you only had one task for it ever, and that was to ask for the... Where the... Yeah, okay, so, so the reason this potentially works, this basically looks about like this right now. The reason that flipping these around works potentially is that uh, the only time the beginning controller needed to talk to the IO expander was to request the first coordinates. And if that's connected directly, it can just do it itself. The only time this had to talk to the address line here, I think I can route the data line in. Uh, so your x0. The only x0 there is during this command that you can do. So yeah, shuffle this down there, move this responsibility to it, put this up here. This can maybe turn into a 4000x. More likely though, it'll stay 6000 and I'll split the responsibilities. This becomes 6000 and things can work. Okay, so... Before anything else, I must do wire routing. Okay, so this P0 parks in a perfect spot there. And eh, just like that one. Yeah, same as how that was. Okay, so now to get to access RX, if I put the radio there, TX would have to connect to an X pin that I need. If I put the radio here and flip it around, right, if I put, flip the radio around here, yeah, that's fine. If I put it here, then RX connects to a simple pin and there's a type mismatch. So it has to go exactly here in this orientation, and I route like that. So X2 is now radio. So X2 is radio. There we go. So that's rerouted. And this, I'll just call X3 for now. Okay, so the connections you had were to IO expander, motor controller, D1. You still have D1. You now have A1. You no longer have IO expander. Okay, so your D1 is X1. Uh, I haven't actually written the Sentinel init code yet. Let's do that now. X1 is the data line, okay. Uh, tech. Uh, x0 on the address, 0, uh, minus jump loop, leap, valid instruction. Okay, right, yeah, so I have to do it this way around, and this way around. Can I minus at? Ooh, I can't. No conditionals in there, huh? That might be a slight problem. That might just be a real problem. Okay, there's one I didn't think of. Well, I can't step because there's lots wrong. Okay, so... Init code might be funny. I can't at and minus at the same time, so I get no conditionals in init code. If this jumps back to that, that line's gonna be disabled, which means what exactly? Hmm. Hmm, okay, so this is weird. I guess here's what I can do. Okay, I can do kind of a... A bootleg version of that. Okay, so these are my init commands that'll never run again. Now, I only have one line to spare here, and I'm going to have to do all of this stuff. I think I can, though. So I lose the move 0x1. You instead move... So you read the Q 
you head move x0 ack you move 0 to x 0 yeah so you do what that is you read the two data lines and then I need enough space to move ack to uh, oh uh, I need enough space to move ack back in here that seems reasonably plausible to be able to get. Start move X2 ACK. X2 is supposed to be the radio and it is. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here's how I can do this. Okay, right. So wait, the label has to come first. That's awkward. I wish it weren't that way. So we got something that's not in negative 999. I'm doing no other conditionals here, so that's totally cool. All right, so move ack, x0. Okay, so what's this look like now? So I got my sentinel in it. Negative ones go in here. Negative one means no value. Uh, and right, I'm gonna have to do this. Okay, so the sentinel value, you're the only one who cares about that. Pretty darn sure. Right, that's an address pointer. The x2 is uh, that, okay. I'm writing code without being absolutely sure I can solve the wire routing, but the results of writing the code will determine... And actually, can't I see here that I clearly can resolve it? So yeah, connect that. Uh, x3 is how you talk to this. Okay, sure. So reach from the radio. Um, you need to know what the Q-head is, though. Is that a problem? Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, address can still go up here, by the way. That might work. Because if address goes up there, you can still answer the Q-head query. Okay, so, but anyway, so how's this code? Uh, move X2, radio, to ACK. Uh... If it's not negative 999, then you'll do some of that. Uh, why is weight there? It doesn't need to be. Oh, it does though. Well, yeah, it just means this. That's right, so it was jump weight for that. Okay, uh, looks reasonable. So if it's not negative 999, then I write it. Um, regardless, I do stuff. Okay. So move ACK to X0, the, that's the address line, so this is X1 for the data. Move X2, radio to the data line. Okay. As long as only one of you two is using that, you can share. As, only, as long as only one of you two is using this, you can share. <laughs> one of you three is using this. So three people want to know A1. Had a moment of my brain just shutting down, spacing out. It'll happen after a session this long. It's inevitable. Move x, move zero to x zero. Uh, uh, yes, move zero to x zero. X zero is the address line. Yes. Okay. So I get the current Q head. I uh set it to zero. I move the two coordinates to x3, which is u. Sounds great. Then I move the saved q-head back to this. Sounds great. And then I sleep. And then I jump to start. So I don't do the sentinel in it anymore. Cool. Okay. Uh, so for you, your x0 now communicates with io expander. Are you okay with that? No. I gotta swap. Okay, x0 equals x1, x1 equals x0. There's a lot of those here. Okay. So you wait for a signal on X1. Uh, right, I definitely dodge the simple pins that aren't using. They did just get in the way. I wish I could clip those off, but I can't. Because uh, like, if I could clip off a simple pin, I maybe could have just stuck this up here with in this size and avoided all this. It's fine though. Uh, actually, I kind of needed A1 access here for this to work, because I didn't write the Sentinel code before I decided I needed to change the layout. So, I guess that's fortuitous. 
So, uh, select X1, move X1 to X2. Right, move X1 to X3. Okay, so tell the motor controllers that they do. These didn't change. Move X0 to DAT. Nope, that's an X1. No, wait, move negative 1 to X0. No, that's an X0. I tell this to do stuff. All right, so I request, uh, you can go there now. Report Q head address. You can still do that. Great. However, it's not an ACK. So instead, just oh, X1, X2. There. Yeah, so now I don't have that storage silliness. Why did I ever do anything but X1 to... Uh, just because there might be operations on this at the time, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so that's perfectly fine. I just want that value. That is that is still perfect. Okay, move X0, dat. So that's the Q head address. Sounds great. Move 1 to X0. Uh, so you get a 1. Then we do this IO shuffle and it goes to, this is now X0 instead of X3. X3 is nothing. Really? Yeah, because that used to be the connection to this. Okay, X3 doesn't exist anymore. So all X3s are now X0. And they're all conveniently highlighted in red, so I won't miss any. Neat. Okay. Uh, and there is no zero message anymore, so this goes away entirely. So, check it. Little boy. Okay, so that can be ACK. You're not even uh, using a DAT register. You were using an ACK for storing that, but you don't need to. And actually, it, you don't even need your ACK. You can just do that. Okay, tiny little boy. Whoops, what? Uh, TCP X2 0. Wow, okay. You, uh, your job almost went away entirely. It didn't entirely. I do still need the IO expansion on this line right here. Do I? No. I can delete you entirely. Oh man, and that simplifies a bunch of stuff because uh, I don't have a spare line in here to report the Q head address to this. <laughs> if I had one more line here, I could delete this? I think so. Because this literally is just forwarding between those and between that and that. But this, so this has the connection. Can I save a line here? <laughs> this is no time to be thinking about optimizing, but can I? Hmm. So like this jump start looks pretty appealing, but it's not going to happen. No, 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 okay. Not going to think about optimization. Uh, if I could save a line here, this could be deleted, but for now I'm just going to leave it as it is. My whole system is in place. All I'm doing right now is just checking my IO pins. Then I'm going to make sure my sentinel values work, and I think it'll be fine. 1x0. Uh, move 1x0, yes. So I tell that this stuff. Move x2, x0, move x2, x0, move x0, x2, 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 x2. Okay, so your pins are sorted. Yours stayed the same. You. And uh, you all stay the same, because I, I replaced all the x0s. Okay, so does this run? What? That is extremely not a problem I expected. What in the world happened to motor X and motor Y? I probably, well, I probably mixed up some, uh, some pin addresses here. Somewhere. But, so SLX X0. Right, so that does the sentinel thing. Cool, yeah, filling it with sentinels. Great. 
Move X to Ack. Take Ack nine. Move X zero. That's uh, your address. Set that to zero. Move that to X three. Cool. So move X one to X two. Yeah. Move X one to X three. Yeah. Sounds fine. How'd these motors mess up? Oh no, my sentinels got sent there. <sighs> okay, so let's change this then. Aha, how about this? Here we go. So just do a last minute translation on that. If you get a negative one, treat it as a zero. Uh, yes, okay. That sounds plausible. Okay, that looks plausible. Hey, it's working so far. It harvested, it's harvesting. So sentinel values are holding, so right here is where things went wrong before. They went right. Oh, look at this program. It passed the first test case. It passed the second test case. Not. Almost. Ooh. Well, as far than I've ever been before. Oh boy, what went wrong here? This is progress. This is great progress. How will I tell? All right, so watch it sweep those things up. Sweep, sweep, sweep. So when you advance, you went there and didn't harvest. So I want my breakpoint actually one later. All right, so I'm glad that problem was as easy to solve as that and I had the extra instruction space to do it, but now what? If it's happening this late, it's probably something subtle that's going to necessitate an entire redesign of this, isn't it? Okay, so you are expecting to harvest. You did not harvest. That is the problem. Everything else worked fine. So why did you not harvest? Or perhaps the question is, why did you expect to harvest? So on the next one, X is going to increase. Y is going to go neutral. You're going to go right over there. The next one is Q is 9-9, nine, nine, right over there. So you walk over that space. Yeah, you should sweep that up. So do I have a 2-9 in here? 9-9, nine, 2-7, nine, two, 2-8. Two, okay, where's your 2-9? Is there a 2-9? 2-8. Two, 2-8, two, eight. Two, eight, yes. So there should also be a 2-7. 9-9, 2-7, 2 eight. Something got overwritten, I'm gonna guess. Nine nine two seven two eight. Wait, the two nines coming in. Ooh, this might be a timing th Oh, it's timing. The newly written one doesn't get detected if it's getting swept up. Is that what it is? Now this I feel like I can fix if it's just timing. But how could it be timing? You write that to... Wait, is that where the Q head was? Was there a negative one here before I wrote to it? There better have been. So Sentinel Valley is working great, mostly. Okay, yeah, so the case is a newly written one needs to be swept up. Whatever's going wrong here, I feel reasonably confident that if that's the problem, I can fix it. Like that should absolutely be detected. I'll bet it's this TLT. That needs to be a TGT and inverted. Maybe. That's my suspicion. Yeah, so it's not detecting that it's sweeping up the one at the head of the, the, the newest one. Okay, that's extremely fixable if that's what it is. But let's see if that's what it is. So right, your Q head is eight. Is that stale? Six, seven, eight. No, that's not stale. That's correct. 
with one to x zero. Okay, so we're searching for uh, what are we searching for. Two nine. Of course we are. I mean, this is going to return a match, and it's going to yeah, it's the TLT. It's totally the TLT. It's definitely the TLT because this returns the Q head, right? Yes, yes, it matches. Okay, that's all it is. U R T G T. You invert, and everything's perfect, right? 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 Like it was so close, that's got to be the last detail I need. All the other test cases are going to pass. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, let's watch the thing on the right. It's fun. Test run 10 had a problem. Are you for real with this? Okay. So Motor X did something unexpected. I wonder if this is the hardest puzzle in the game. It feels like it must be. Like, how could it not? Oh, you're idle. Nobody's going anywhere because the queue is empty. I don't have handling for that. And it's not until test 10 that it actually empties the queue. Okay. I'm worried, but I could plausibly be able to fix this without disaster. I could believe it. See, I got this extra space here. This is how I can expand. My IO expander can do more tasks, potentially, if it has to. It could also, like, almost be eliminated if I had an extra line here. Almost. Yeah, if I had an extra line here, I could totally, totally get rid of it. Because I could replace... So the IO between you and you would just go directly, and the, the one query for Q head would come from you just sending a message. Uh, over the, your X1. Okay, but anyway, so what happens? Right, my queue is empty. What does it look like when my queue is empty? Shouldn't it just do nothing? Oh, I deleted. I deleted that because it was the last one. Okay, so here's what I do. I got an easy fix for this. I don't even have to look at the rest of this code. Here's what I do. I move act to that, your current position. If you get a negative one, just hold in place. Perfect. Perfect. That's all it'll take. All right. I'll get to test 10 and be fine. Right. Like that's the entire problem. Right. Right, right, right. Okay. That's my breakpoint. It succeeds. That was the fix for that. Working hard here. I did it. I did it. I did it. My power usage is better than average. My production cost is very average. My lines of code are a little high. I beat the average by a huge amount here. What? What is this? I've never been this far left of the peak of power usage. And on this puzzle of all puzzles, I did it. Oh, I did it. I did it. I did it. All, please join me in warmly congratulating Dr. Sumura and her team. <laughs> I did a lot of work. I'm sure she and Derek did too. He had to work on the mechanics of the thing. I just had to control it. Just had to control it in that tiny little circuit board where there's no room for anything. For the success of the Ocean's Bounty program, which has essentially solved the issue of food production for the entirety of Avalon City. Okay, with that amount of effort, I didn't end world hunger, but I ended the hunger of this entire city. <laughs> That's how much work it takes. I'm cool with this. Additionally, the technologies developed for this program will make a lasting beneficial impact on all of humanity. So this is a big win, not only for our independence, but for the future of the planet as well. Sun Hatian, President Avalon City. A message from Sun himself. That's amazing. Congratulations, Lisa. So what's next after revolutionizing how the world makes food? Thanks, Derek. It was a group effort, of course. To be honest, I thought about taking some time off, but Enzo is already pulling me onto another project. No rest for me. Well, if you need any robotics, you know where to find me. Yay, I did it! Okay, that's where the sushi robot's gonna show up. I saw that in the parts list. Okay, so watch this be even harder than this. So man, like, I totally nailed these graphs. Like, I'm a little above the lines of code, but I'm way below on the power usage. What did you do? What did anyone do? Like, my graphs 
are just whatever they're going to be because like this is um uh i'll even label that okay cost could go down because this is deletable because i could totally save a line here and just pass this in here that's how i would optimize this uh that would save a lot of lines that would save a good bit of power like i'd be better on everything and my production cost would go down by well three yuan but still that's uh that might land me here I'm going to look for a way to save a line here. It's hard to see one, but I'm going to look for one. If I can find one, then this thing's only job goes away, and that'd be super cool. This is no longer accurate, so finished, deletes that. But hey, I'm done. I did it. Yay. Okay, well, enjoy this three-hour video. <laughs> Maybe I found something to edit out, and it's a little shorter, but yeah. Oh boy, this will be the longest video I've... No, it's not. I've uploaded longer stuff than that. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you next time for Sushi Robot.